90% of the direction and 90% of the work was before the cameras even started rolling. Prone, prone. It was in the training. The training was intense. I mean, by the time you finished, you felt like you'd shot a big portion of the movie, but we'd never rolled camera. They say in the seals, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. So they're very smooth. They don't rush. They take their time. They're thoughtful. We felt in order to get the actors up to speed and to be able to move with that kind of smoothness, they needed to practice. I've never been uh, involved in a film where the actors felt such a strong sense of responsibility to honor the, the fallen characters that they were playing. The actors instantly understood the seriousness of what they were being asked to do, and they took that with them through their training. We brought in, you know, the Navy SEALs to handle these weapons, teach them how to hold them, how to load them, how to shoot them. Well, it started basically with just uh, fundamentals on the rifle, how to work the, the rifle and what was what, and this, that, and the other. And then we went to mag changes and mag drills and then moving and shooting and, and then verbiage and calling and everything like that. Establish a prone position. Cover! Cover! What? They had a lot to learn. I mean, they, they really did. Firing line is hot. Pull that back, and then this hand slides right back off that 203 and locks this back. This is a 203? Yeah, we'll get into that later. Okay. It's a grenade launcher. In our world, if I'm changing a magazine out of my rifle, that's just second nature. That's muscle memory. And if you don't look like you know what you're doing on film, it's a discredit to Axe and all those guys. And you're trying to assimilate as much as you can, as fast as you can. It was a blessing to have these guys and just, you know, there's something to these SEALs that is different from any other part of the military. And you want to encompass that and really just try and envelop yourself with these guys. Hold up. Move. Shit, I was ready to give up. We were just doing 12 hour days and make pretend. <laughs> there was a couple days I wanted to give up. But you know, you realize, you remind yourself of what they've been through and what, you know, certainly what Marcus and Axe and Murphy and Dietz and everybody else who was on those helicopters. You know, and the guys before and the guys after him. And you gotta, you gotta suck it up. You gotta go out there and make it, make them proud. Live fire the first three days. That was no joke. You have to know this shit inside out and then some. Hit, hit. We went through thousands and thousands of bullets. I know that if I'm handed that, without a doubt, 300 yards is no problem. Just ping, 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 ping. And knowing that, it, it serves you in a film. Knowing that you can do the thing, it takes the pressure off. It's handled. I know we're hard on them and we're pushing them and stuff like that. And then once we get up into the mountains, I'm sure it's going to be a lot worse. Yeah, for this, we're just trying to get them uh, used to working and moving as a team and getting their hand signals down and uh, just getting used to being out here and being quiet and sneaky. We want their reactions to look good, too, as well. See how they deal with problems. Yeah, we have a little surprise for them out here. We're working on the movement once they're under fire and how they're getting, you know, either aggressing through the target or how they're, you know, get trying to get away and get out of there and break contact using using, you know, firepower and cover. And my guys are as the role players, they're adding realism to that. They're giving them something to look at. With their wardrobe and their dress and everything else, it, it adds realism to it. It definitely ramps up the intensity once these guys start getting someone shooting back at them. And they they took out the live fire and they put in um, sim munitions, which is like the closest non-lethal thing you can fire at someone. It's not a paintball, it's actually like a little plastic thing, but it goes far. <laughs> Those guys are getting better. They're starting to take us down right when we're getting at them. I was a big advocate of, of the training, and it really helped, really did. That trust, you know, that's a big thing, especially when you're in the fight. You just have to trust, because these guys, you know, are your brothers. You don't gain the advantage by working individually. You gain the strength by working as a team.
You know, it, it brings me to a point that Rudyard Kipling said so well. It is the wolf that makes the pack and the pack that makes the wolf. They've just come together. They're learning a whole lot of stuff. They're basically getting fed information with a fire hose and they don't know each other well enough to, you know, I can, I can look at a guy out there that I've worked with for a long time in the dark and by his, by the way he carries his gear and his silhouette, I know who that is and I know what movie he's gonna make. We need to get them to that point. There's an attitude. You can do whatever it is you put your mind to. You just gotta figure it out. And if you can't figure it out, you know your brother will. And then anybody cut any corners and nobody was trying to pull any Hollywood shit. You know, we were there, we were present. I mean, we, we put them through the ringer, man. We beat them hard. And they came together as a team. They, you could, you could see it. You could watch it, watch them while we were putting them through this training. That they just started to come together, man. And then they were just tactically sound the way they were moving and shooting and communicating and everything. It was just a good job, man.